Hey, welcome back. Uh, this is Dave Briner from Synergis. Uh, I thought today maybe we would um, look at sheet metal. Uh, maybe just a little getting started. Um, a little something to introduce you to a few, um, a few of the steps to look at the styles and a few of the major commands. Um, just a little uh, upfront note. Uh, sheet metal is incredibly um, useful. I mean, it, it, it does so much, but along with that is um, there's a lot to learn. So we're certainly not going to be able uh, to make you proficient in a 10-15 uh, minute video, whatever this may end up. So let's. Um, I'm going to just take a couple of the basic steps um, on how to start your uh, your styles and a template and a couple of the commands. We'll just we'll just make a, a quick easy part. So let's just uh, let's begin. Um, we're gonna we're gonna open a um, a standard sheet metal part right here. <clears throat> now, as you can see, I've got a I've got one started. I have one of my basic ones. So when I because I do a lot of things over and over again, I've already got my uh, sheet metal default set up uh, to accommodate some of the gauges and the and the steels that I work with. So we're going to just going to start with a, a basic um, generic template. So we're right here inside, and it, and like everything, it brings you into the sketch mode. So let's just quickly start a, a sketch. I'm just going to go up here to the draw panel and uh, choose a rectangle. Uh, go to my origin, and I'll just um, slap in a couple dimensions, uh, six by four. <clears throat> and um, now. Like everything in uh, in 3D modeling, we start with this sketch, and um, it's constrained. I'm just going to finish the sketch now. In sheet metal, we end up with a basic shape, and we this is what we start with. Uh, your a flat plate or a flat section on your shape, but uh, the basic command is face, and that's pretty much like your extrude command. But what you want to do first unless uh, you have them already set up is you're going to go here to your sheet metal defaults and um, your sheet metal default starts up and you can see already it's got a 0.12 thickness and I, I really don't want that so we're going to go here to uh, the pencil to edit our rule and you're going to see there's uh, there's two started uh, a standard default and a metric default and it starts with a generic material well I want something a little bit different so all I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to say no uh, new, and I'm going to make um, uh, let's we'll just say 14 gauge. Um, Stand the steel. All right. Now you're going to see right away that uh, it, it enters in under my sheet metal rules, but down here you can see they put some markers in here what I want to do is I want to either double click or right click and say active so now you're gonna see that uh, my active style is highlighted with a little marker and it's uh, bold so I'm gonna go in here now and I'm going to now uh, to be to be honest with you right here you're gonna see that it's read only what I'm affecting is only this this sketch or this part uh, in order to uh, save this, I would need to save this as a template, put it in my template file. But uh, that's something for uh, maybe a class because there's there's so much in here with styles. We could spend an entire day just with styles. But uh, just to get started, I'm going to choose materials. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to select uh, stainless steel. I'm going to say. Um, I'm going to save my 14 gauge 0 0.075. Now there's so many settings in here, uh, K factors, um, your miters and, and gaps, and that really has to depend on your manufacturing processes. So that's not something we're going to get into in something uh, this minor or this quick, I should say, this class. So your bends, you can choose what type of um, relief you want for the bends, and you can see they're straight tear round I'm gonna select the tear and the bend radius is thickness uh, you're gonna see I haven't saved it yet if I say save 
you'll see the thickness is 0 0.075 and now I can I can reduce that um, by changing the thickness of the bend radius right here it does not have to be thickness but again um, that's a that's a whole class in itself so let's just start with what we've got here I've I created a material uh, I added it, I created a thickness for my gauge, and uh, I set what kind of um, a bend relief that I want. So we're going to say save and close, and you're going to see right here I have my 14 gauge stainless steel. It's using a thickness which is 0 0.075. Now when I say face now, you don't have a lot of selections. It's choosing the active sheet metal default that you have set. So a sheet metal part it's uniform thickness because that is the piece of metal that you're using so you don't have an option of what the thickness is going to be in fact you don't have a lot of options here because it's going to automatically extrude you can change which direction uh, it is going to extrude into so it automatically picks a profile because there's only one there so we're just gonna say okay and um, so there we got it so we've got a um, a basic shape now in sheet metal what we're going to do is add or subtract or change some of the things that we have and up here on your toolbar you're going to see the create toolbar and the modify are probably the, the two that you're going to use the majority of the time um, there's a lot in here we're not going to get into contour flange or uh, contour roll these are these again are are left for maybe a uh, a class in themselves uh, one of the basic ones we're going to start with is a flange and in a flange uh, all it's going to do is uh, place a flange on whatever you choose if I choose the upper edge of of one of, of the plate here uh, it is going to place a flange upwards of that if I put it on the lower if I place the lower it will put it in the lower direction but we'll just select the upper and you can see that it gives you a silhouette of what it kind of intends to do now I can change that direction and I have a few other choices here I can choose uh, the height datum so right now it's taking it from the very top to the bottom of the plate uh, I can choose um, the bend from the top of the bend to the intersection of the radius or from the curve up to the top I'm going to leave it at uh, the overall now you have bend position you have the overall position right now and what this does it, it keeps the length of my part which is six inches now uh, if I place it on the outside radius now I have six inches plus the radius plus the thickness and if I choose outside of base face I have the six inches plus the thickness so the you know, overall would be 6.075 um, this would be for a tangent if I had this at a angle it would take it out here at the very bent tangent so I'm just going to keep it here as the overall so I keep my six inch distance I can change the height right now the default is uh, one inch I can I can select uh, a height change there and I'll I'll select 1.5 and we're gonna say okay so there's our first change or feature we added to our sheet metal part I can uh, I can go back in and uh, add another one so right now I can same procedure I can go in there and I can change what I want I'll make this 0.75 and we can say okay so uh, I've now put uh, a couple bends in there uh, to move down uh, one of the easier things to do let's see we're gonna start a sketch to add a feature and I'll choose a circle and I'm just gonna dump one right here make it 0.75 so I can certainly you know put dimensions on the position this wherever I'd like but let's uh, try to be quick about this um, so I'll just finish the sketch now here on the modify there's a cut command and that just kind of works very much like an extrusion a cut extrusion again there's not a lot to choose because there's only one sketch uh, and you don't have to choose a, a dimension because uh, it's going to cut through um, the entire uh, the entire part 
Uh, you can certainly go half the distance or whatever, but that's up to you. I'm going to take it all the way through, and that's uh, I place myself a uh, a cut hole in my part. So another kind of uh, cool feature is uh, I'm going to place a sketch. Uh, what I want to do is I'm going to place a fold in here someplace, and I'm going to uh, take a line, and I'm going to just select the top edge and the bottom edge and I can uh, again I can dimension this uh, wherever I like so I can place my my fold wherever I want it I'll say exit and I'm gonna come here to the fold I'm gonna choose my sketch line and you're gonna see that it gives me a indicator and on this indicator I can change the direction of the bend up or down I can change uh, the angle uh, if I want to go 45 degrees but for right now I'm just gonna say 90 degrees and we'll say and again you can change the fold location uh, I'm gonna leave it at the default and we're gonna say okay so right now um, I've got it fold on the sketch line that I placed. So um, now we got uh, another feature here. That if I want to put a cutout uh, that's going to cross this bend, um, I can see that's going to cause me a little bit of a headache. So there's a there's a pretty cool feature here that you go in and it's uh, unfold. So uh, quickly walk down and you're going to look at uh, what it's asking for and right now it's just asking for stationary reference so I'm just going to choose my front face and it's again now looking for what bends you want to unfold so I can choose uh, this bend I can go and select more if I prefer but um, right now I'm just going to stick with this one you're going to see because you have preview it's flipping it out and I'm going to say OK so now in this position I can place a sketch and I am going to place a rectangle and I'll just say uh, we'll put it right about there and like anything else I can just go in and I can dimension this if I'd like and we can go over and And we'll put it, uh, we'll just say 0.5 there. So I created my sketch and dimensioned it. I'll finish and go through and cut. So I put my slot in. Uh, now I've got to get the shape back to its original shape. So I'm going to say refold. Go through the same process. I'm going to choose my face, the bend to refold. It remembers uh, its original position. I'm going to say OK, and there is my cutout that crosses over my fold, my bend line. So that works pretty neat. Uh, I've got another one here. Um, again, like I said, contour flange. Some of these are left for a full class. Uh, the bend is another one that may take just a little bit more time. Uh, it's not real difficult, but we're not going to address that one right now. Uh, let's, um, <clears throat> let's take a look at the punch tool. So uh, what I want to do in the punch tool, it requires you to have a point placed someplace. So I'm going to place a sketch on this face. I'm going to drop a couple points in here. And I'm going to dimension them. So I'll make them 2.5. And we'll make them equidistant from the center. and I'll bring it down and I'll add a constraint so let's see if it's uh, uh, on constraint we'll want horizontal vertical and we're going to constrain that point so there we go so I placed two points and just located them I'm going to go to my punch tool and the punch tool gives you a lot of predefined punches that come out of the box. You can see um, 
what they look like here. Um, some of these may be useful to you. Um, this one I use more than anything, a keyhole or maybe a keyway. Um, and this O-Round, I, uh, I tend to use that one. But you can generate your own um, punch cutouts. Uh, they're not real hard to do. Um, I think I may have done a uh, blog on that at one time. You can look that up. Again, this is uh, something left for a class. But for now, I'm just going to select uh, the keyhole. And you're going to see right there that it uh, superimposes uh, my choice. And I can go into here and I'll select at least a direction. Uh, 90 uh, upside down we're going to say negative and you can go in and uh, an effect change to whatever all the dimensions so you can change the whole diameter of the slot width or the overall length um, I'll leave it for um, what it is right now and I'll just say finish so there's some keyholes we could hang this bracket um, what else um, there's a lot of things you can do right now, circular, rectangular, patterning, uh, mirroring. Uh, we can just go in here and select a feature, uh, direction, I'll say I want three of them. I'll space them a little bit differently, 0.25, there you go. So uh, you can see it doesn't take a long time to uh, create certain things. Um, one of the most powerful features of sheet metal is uh, create a flat pattern. Flat pattern. So I can go in and uh, there you have it. Uh, right there we get a flat pattern. I have my um, my bend positions. Uh, now I can open a drawing. Uh, I would have to save this part. And we'll just two. That's fine. And uh, let me start a drawing. So I can go in here. I can uh, place my base position. Uh, here's my uh, my folded model, and I can say OK. Now the neat thing about this is I can also place my flat pattern. So if I want to go in here and click and say flat pattern and we can say OK and there you have it um, it's got uh, a flat pattern there's, uh, there's there's quite a few things you can do with this um, you can go in and put some of your bend information in so you, it'll retrieve and remember um, so it's bend down radius of 0 0.008 so and like anything else, you can go in here and add your leader notes, dimensions, uh, whatnot else. So there you have it. Um, just a very quick tutorial. I uh, went a lot longer than I anticipated, but uh, sheet metal, it's got a lot. And um, there's a lot you can do with it. You can really make this thing sing and dance. Um, if you're interested in it, uh, contact someone at Synergist and uh, and sign up for a um, sheet metal class. But um, if you want to get started on your own, punch around, uh, walk through some of this, uh, go at it. Uh, walk yourself in, and it's not real, real difficult, but it's uh, it can be a lot of fun. Uh, again, till later, uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, it's Dave Briner. Uh, see you soon.